Hey everyone, my name's Pete, I'm from Pete 32 and also I'm the second half of the Budget DIY guys, also here on YouTube. For those who don't know me, I collect and play video games and games consoles, and recently came into uh, possession of a second one of these, the original PlayStation. The second one that I got was much better quality than this one, which was admittedly on its last legs. So I decided I wanted to do something with this and a couple of ideas flew around in my head. Um, I was going to make it into a key hook, I was going to make it into a, a door number sign but I thought it was a bit big for that. Uh, the key hook idea was going to have key rings made out of the sockets for these and hang into that bit. Um, but I settled on a table lamp for my um, upcoming game room which would look really cool on the um, on the table. And this is how I'm going to do it. Now, as with everything I do in my life, I am wingy. I've got no DIY expertise and I don't even have a proper workspace yet. So, so yeah, completely winging it. Making it up as I go along. I've got a base idea of what I want to do in my head. So for this build, what you're going to need is obviously an old school console. Um, obviously don't buy this, use one of your own that's broken. This build will work with anything with a push-in power button, so you're talking PlayStation, the Sega Dreamcast, Sega Mega Drive, Sega Saturn, anything like that with a, with a push-in click thing. I mean Sega Mega Drive 2 as well. Uh, you're also going to need a lamp. I got the lamp base from Ikea, it's called Henna. It needs to be one where you can screw off the stem. That is absolutely necessary for this. Uh, but yeah, once again, this is called Henna from Ikea. It costs £5. Because it's only a lamp base, it doesn't come with a lampshade. So I picked up this one, this, this nice cheap one from Ikea for 4 quid. And you're also going to need, if your lamp doesn't already have one, <coughs> an inline foot switch. I got this off Amazon for a couple of quid. And because it's Ikea, they don't come with light, with light bulbs. So a light bulb that will fit your um, lamp. Altogether, everything, not including the PlayStation, cost about £15. Alright, you're going to want to start by um, taking this thing apart, obviously. By removing all the screws from the back. When you've done that, the whole top should lift off, and you want to take everything out from the inside of the machine, apart from this, because, essentially, if that was to lift out, the memory card and, um, and controller ports would be gone just leaving two big holes in the front and that would look weird you will be left with holes in the back but that's not a problem you want to make sure that everything fits inside um, I have an issue with my switch it is a little bit big but we'll see how it goes when the lid's on yeah that is no good the base, however, fits nicely, um, almost perfectly, actually. I'm going to want to get rid of this little stem here, which is keeping it from sitting flush. But the feet on the base hold it above the rest of the things, so that's a good thing. Unfortunately, the power switch wouldn't fit in to the place I wanted it to fit on the actual machine. So I've taken it apart and the actual switch itself is literally just this. So, which will obviously fit. And probably work a lot better. As it is, I believe it doesn't even make any kind of contact. So I need to find a way of stacking that so that it sits flush to it and works well. It's going to be a case of working out how much I need to build that up and mounting it in correctly. So that's one thing for another, <coughs> one thing for another day. Luckily enough, this base fits in almost perfectly in the um, space it needs. I just need to cut down this bit of um, flash in here, which is not necessary for holding the machine together and that should work perfectly. Now, I understand not everybody's going to have a miniature chainsaw at home 
This is the Bosch Easy Cut 12. I got this for Christmas and it is so cool. But um, any sharp blade should be able to do this. Beautiful. So now the base of this will sit virtually flat, directly central. Honestly, I could not have picked a more perfect lamp if I tried. Right, so this takes very minimal wiring. Um, I'm not an electrician, so if you don't know wiring at all, then you're in the same boat as me. But um, what it does need is this switch taking off and replacing with a different one, which you've already seen. What I learned from this mostly is that IKEA does not want you to get into their switches, um, but with a bit of prying with a small screwdriver, I actually managed to get this thing open. Um, so you want to get rid of this bit. And what you'll see here is that, I mean, wiring apparently is different stateside and in different countries. But you have one complete wire and then one wire which is bracketed into these things. You want to pry these little holders open and get this wire out. For God's sake, don't have the thing plugged in while you're doing this. When you've done that, you're, um, you're likely to be found something like this, uh, you are going to have to cut any wires that are also connected as well, so make a note of which one you need to wire onto the switch. Um, I had to cut the switch off because it wasn't letting go, so you're going to need to get a bit of flex loose on there as well. A bit of exposed wire, should I say, not flex. Uh, that's kind of how you should have it. You know, need some exposed wire on the other wires as well. Once again, don't forget which wires need to be connected to the switch. Next thing you're going to need to do is we're going to need to measure this, which is the stem of your lamp. Uh, the reason we need to measure this is because we need to drill a hole in the top of the PlayStation and you're going to want the hole to be as snug as possible um, to stop the machine, you know, stop the stem from wobbling about and things, especially if it's not secured properly. We're looking at roughly 11 millimeters for that. So it's time to find a drill bit. All right. Well, I tried to film myself doing this, but I was using my um, head mounted cam and basically as good as it is, you can't see what you're filming. And um, I ended up filming nothing this while I was doing this. So that footage is completely useless. What I had to do was drill a hole through the top of the PlayStation like this. Um, the reason we measured up the stem of the light is so we could drill as snug a hole as possible. Um, it was 11 millimeters, and I ended up using this 12 millimeter bit. I don't know the names of the bits, I'm sorry, but I'm sure you can find one like that if you have a collection of drill bits. And the best thing about working with this PlayStation is, I don't know if the Dreamcast is the same, but there is clearly marked out the center of the thing. So I ended up drilling a little bit off center because um, it had like a kind of raised bit where the bit kept slipping off it. But from the front, you can't really tell. Now that was, it's 12 millimeters, so it's not exactly snug. But it fits in quite nice. It should hopefully sit well because the base sits well. But um, if not, I'll just have to have a, add a bit of hot glue to the middle of there. So that's that aspect of it done. All right, so the next, next bit we're gonna have to do is add our, um, switch if you don't want to do this if you just want to use the switch that is built in that's fine and make this build a hell of a lot easier could get a little cumbersome because you're going to need a wire through that it needs to go back through the base of the lamp otherwise you can't attach the base again so you remembered which um, which wire you needed to wire through the switch didn't you in my case it was brown get your little switch here what you're going to need is a very small screwdriver to loosen these off once again while you're working at the wires don't have the thing plugged in i will not be held responsible for any dead people and you're going to want one end of the brown wire if it's got a little bit frayed just give it a twist feed it into there it might take a bit of persuasion but it should go Uh, 
and tighten the little guy up. This is why you need some exposed wires because they need to be able to make contact. And you want to do the same for the other end of the wire. If you haven't had to cut this wire, then you're done here. If you have, then you're going to need a bit of electrical tape. Alright, so you're going to get some lecky tape. You're going to put these wires together and twist those so you know they're going to make a connection. Hopefully they've stayed together because that was about literally my last bit of electrician's tape. <laughs> and there you go. Should work. Alright, so I've hit my next snag with this in that um, the lamp isn't quite sitting central in the machine because uh, it won't come this way enough because of this. Now I really want to keep this unit in because otherwise it's going to look crazy without it. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is get this bit of metal off and see if that helps. Just going to unscrew the unit. So yeah, the metal just slides off. Try putting that back in. I'll not screw it back in yet. Just slot it into place over the pegs that hold it in place, handily. It still needs to come forward a bit, so I'm going to try and get this uh, chipboard off here, which is soldered on nicely. Crazy. The the pins that go inside the mem into the um, into the controller ports. That's just that's cool. Because I've never seen that bit of the PlayStation before. Oh, that hit me right in the forehead. You might want to wear goggles while you're doing this. <laughs> Getting rid of anything now that might obstruct things. Alright, so I've trimmed that down some more. Let's see if it fits. And the answer is yes, just about. Um, it pops it up a little bit at the front there, but once it's screwed in, it'll do nothing. There is a slight lean, I might try and take a little bit more length off. Off that unit. Truth be told, there's not a lot more I can do um, other than taking the other side of this metal thing off, which is clipped in. So the way I got it off was to get a very small screwdriver, find a place I can wedge it under, And then just lift it off. But yeah, this um, this whole grey plastic thing is all one piece, so it's not just going to be a case of taking bits off like modularly. Will these bits come out? Will that help? Where's my exacto? Right, I had an exacto knife on here, it's gone walkabout. So, we're winging it as usual. I'm going to try and break down a bit. this. Because <laughs> I don't want it to lean. It's perfectly serviceable but I will see it. Hopefully, I mean I can't really screw it back in now, but hopefully that'll work. Let's see. That's done the job beautifully. 
There is a slight wobble when you move it around, but nothing too nothing too noticeable. So now I'm going to get on and try and do something about the switch. One problem you're going to run into is the fact that the switch um, doesn't actually reach the power switch of the PlayStation. Uh, and you're going to have to build it up. What I've done is, because um, we're at a crafty home, I've found this bit of foam core, um, which I've glued in place there, which is where the power switch will lay on the base unit. And what I've done is I've glued the switch in upside down to the bottom of the power button for the PlayStation. You need to make sure you use a thick glue, like a hot glue gun. Because if you use super glue, it's likely to run inside the electronics or glue the um, switches in place or something like that. So yeah, I'm hoping that's built it up enough. I'm going to test it out now. Now it wasn't um, it wasn't thick enough for it to make any kind of contact. So I'm going to add another layer of this. So that's the second layer of foam core added. Just glued it in place with a hot glue gun, and that appears to be too much. So I'm going to try and peel this off. off. Maybe should have tried it before I glued it in. All right, now I hit a bit of a snag. What you're gonna to need to do to make your switch connect is to build, sorry, just, the irony just hit me there that I use switch and connect, which is a, a Nintendo and a Microsoft thing, to make a PlayStation lamp. But yeah, to make your um, power switch connect to the actual power switch on the PlayStation, you're gonna to need to build up a little bit there. I've been trying different things. I tried a bit of foam core, what you usually get, this kind of stuff here, what you usually get from hobby shops and stuff. Um, didn't seem to be any good. One piece wasn't thick enough, two pieces was too thick. So what I've done here is just from looking around and trying to find something that might work, I've cut up an old CD. <laughs> I've layered five pieces and wrapped it in duct tape and I'm hoping that works. Also having the power switch glued to the bottom of the um, PlayStation power switch was not ideal, I, it turns out. The glue wasn't strong enough to hold it in place and it kept falling about. So what I've done here is I've drilled the, I've popped out the power switch which is as easy as anything, you just squeeze these two bits and it pops straight out. And there's a hole for the, this bit to go through. And I've drilled that bigger with that 12mm drill bit I used earlier. And what I want to do here is... Just oh, bear with me a second. Just pop everything in place. Get a decent pen. Recommend a gold or silver sharpie because it'll show up nicely on black duct tape. Any kind of marker pen if you're using a different colour. And you want to just pop the pen through there, mark on it where it's going to sit. Lift it up here, and there's your mark. So essentially I'm going to want to fit to glue the power switch right on that mark. We're almost done and I'm pleased to say that it is working. Now what I'm having now, the trouble is, is the um, power switch doesn't pop up enough for it to, for the switch to spring back into place. So you can like switch it on, but that's as far as you're getting. Um, so what I'm hoping to will solve this is cutting off these clips here which stop the spring stop the button from coming all the way out which should hopefully solve that it will mean that the button will just pop just fall out if the um, lamp gets knocked over or anything but I'm not selling these it's only for me so I'm gonna um gonna see if it works moment of truth so pleased So absolutely stoked that that's actually worked. Um, the last thing I've got to do now is put the lampshade on and screw the um, base together. So I'll, um, I'll let you know how that's worked. And there we go, the finished article. The 
looking smooth. I'm very, very pleased with that. It's not often that I come up with um, a DIY project and it actually comes to fruition and works perfect. So that is super awesome. I got the lampshade from Wilkinson's because obviously it's Ikea, it doesn't come with anything basically. You get the bare minimum when you buy stuff from Ikea. That was £4. The lamp itself was Hema from Ikea, that was a fiver. And other bits like a light bulb, uh, the switch and everything, they come to about five. We'll call this about a fifteen pound build. One thing to, that I've only just come to realise is that you literally do get the bare minimum with IKEA, so they didn't include the bit that holds the lampshade in place. So you, if you, you're gonna want to find one of them from somewhere, but if it's just gonna sit in place, then so be it. But. There is a little bit of a fault with the switch, sometimes it'll twist a bit and won't depress, but for the most part it works perfect. It's covered in cat hair because everything in this house is covered in cat hair. Uh, look up there, there's my PlayStation clock that Susie got me for Christmas. So I'm happy I've kind of got a little matching set now which is going to be great in my, um, in my game room when I get my new house. I don't think I could be more happy with that. Excellent. Once again, just last thing before I leave, I have to reiterate, don't do any of this while the uh, lamp is connected to the mains. Um, I won't be held responsible for anyone killing themselves. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've warned you a number of times. I'll stick a warning at the start of the video as well. So, yeah. Uh, but it was pretty easy. I've got no expertise whatsoever. So yeah, there you go. If anyone makes um, a different version of this and improves on my ideas, please just give me a little bit of a shout out in your video. Um, if you found this video through the Pete Fighter Two channel, check out Budget DIY Guys. If you found this channel through uh, found this video through the Budget DIY Guys channel. Please check out Pete Fighter 2, that's my own personal channel. Budget DIY Guys is a, a DIY channel with me and my friend Matt from Oklahoma, US. And, um, yeah, I'll have links to both of those in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.